Well, hi there. I'm Diana Montford, the world's first transgender television journalist. Became born male, became female. I get so confused, but then I always was. Um, my guest is transgender activist Ms. Brooke Serda. You've seen her many times before. Hopefully you'll see her many times again. We are going to discuss one of the great immortals of the transgender world, Ms. Marsha P. Johnson, who died 25 years ago this year. She died under exceedingly suspicious circumstances. She was found in the river. No one knows if she was murdered, if she fell in. What happened? No one knows, and I guess no one ever will. But anyway, Marsha was a great gal. I knew her. I don't think Brooke did, did you? No, I got to New York City in uh, 1992. And uh, yeah, she, <clears throat> I mean, but uh, people that were still talking a lot, uh, like in the village, and um, you know, th there was a lot of still talk about that. I remember uh, there was a year in the Wits wig stock, um, they, they actually released a wig in her honor with some balloons for yeah. Marsha P. Johnson, and uh, at that time I was wondering, you know, who who was Marsha, and that's how I started to to find out. Before internet, it was like we didn't know nothing. Right. I mean, unless that you that you like was in those circles, right? I feel like you know, it, but now I'm so happy that that information has been a little bit more um, democratized. So whatever yeah. they say that mm -hmm. with uh, Twitter, that YouTube, anybody can just do your own thing too. And that's how we learn. Now you can Google something and you just go like this. And someday you'll be able to Google yourself? Well, you can now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, your show comes out when, 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 the, when the Google, it could like, you know, the shows I've been to other, you know, and definitely it, 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 it comes out. And, uh, but I mean, a lot of people like, they didn't really know, um, you know, how, um, Important was, you know, Marsha P. Johnson, Marcia was not just for our community, but for New York City. Yes, and Marsha was, the P stood for pay it no mind, which yes, she really did say all the time. She was a lady of color. She was not well educated. She didn't really have to be. She had uh, innate intelligence in her own way. She was certainly street smart. She uh, was a lot of fun. She cared a lot, a lot about the community. I take it she was not on um, great terms with her birth family. So we, the transgender community, were her family. She uh, helped uh, the great Sylvia Rivera, the late great Sylvia Rivera, when Sylvia first came out, you can imagine. And she... Uh, was one of the leaders of the Stonewall Rebellion in 1969. She was uh, she was very nice. She was a lot of fun. I didn't know her well, but I knew her, and she was a good person. And that's pretty much the best you can say of anyone, you know. Yeah, I mean, she was, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, beloved by many and hated by many too because you know I I met a couple of her uh, close girlfriends when we used to ho have the trans empowerment uh, prog program trans empowerment project I don't know uh, gender identity T project no 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 T T E P uh, uh, on Thirteenth Street a housing works I I didn't go to you that never one. went to that no. one uh, yeah it used to be um, twice a week I used to go to the gender identity project at the center but I think by the time that started. I just wasn't going to those things because I sort of felt empowered already, you know. Arlene Hoffman started Was that. great. Was you met Arlene Hoffman? I knew her very well. Oh, shit. I've been, like, looking for people. Oh, I, she I, was wanna, I never seen a picture. People, oh, beautiful. Tanya said, they're going to get you a picture oh, of she Arlene was Hoffman. She was because beautiful. she fought tooth and nail in House and Works for us to have She was beautiful. That. Arlene Hoffman was also a lady of color. She lived with her sister in Harlem. Beautiful, beautiful woman. You'd never dream, she looked totally cisgender. You would never dream she was um, transgender. Sadly, she died, I believe, of the virus. You know, she died of AIDS. She was uh, uh, as beautiful inside as she was outside. I cannot say enough good stuff about um, 
Arlene Hoffman. She was really just a wonderful human being, you know? Yeah, and I also heard about Tracy Bumpers. Do you remember her too? No, I never Tracy remember. Bumpers. I think she moved to Cali and she died over there, um, but she was also uh, part of a, I mean, uh, uh, also to, to mention, to, to be more more truthful, Miss Kiara St. James, she was very adamant. You know, Bally White was also one yeah, of the sure, last one before sure, she sure. moved out uh, to the uh, sea. Uh, oh, Bali in, lives in D.C. now? Yeah, Bali White, yeah. yeah. So she, they used to have this, uh, used to be trans empowerment uh, program. Uh, it was uh, every, it was first every, uh, for many, for 20 something years, it was Wednesdays and Fridays right. at three o'clock. Yeah, but you see, by that time, I was already empowered, so I didn't go to those things. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, it, but it was because beautiful. Because I'm older than you are, so. You know. I mean, it was, it was really beautiful because you used to gather, like, you know, 30, sometimes 60 trans women. Sure. You know, and a, a lot of them, they didn't really need it, but just like, you just like sometimes we did you need to be amongst yourself, sure. you know. Yeah, well, I, I, I served two years <laughs> at GIP, too. You good, forgot good, that? Good. <laughs> that? That was my second. First, I was at ACQC in, uh, in, in, in Woodside in, in Queens with Lorena Borjas. And then Cristina Herrera took me to, to GIP. I love okay. Cristina Herrera has been on this show. She's great. Yes, I, I, I did get to see one of the shows. I had to catch up with all. I know you had uh, Miss Julie Owens, and I keep forgetting. I just make an old to, to watch. We've had everyone on. Yeah. A lot of people. If you're trans and you haven't been on this show, call me. Opportunity. Yes, because this is precious, you know, to have uh, people document. Uh, I, always, I always have a vision, like, you know, I wish that there was a photographer that will, you know, um, take the picture, everybody's picture, and put it like in a big book. Mm -hmm. Like a, like a, like yes. a, you know, like a high school book. Yes, yes. And so this is kind of like a census that so we know. Past like, and present. Because every time it's like, you remember that girl? You remember like, yeah, and like people, right. everybody would go crazy amongst each other. Past and present. Not only us today, but people like Sylvia Rivera and Arlene Hoffman and Marsha B. Johnson and others. You know, there were also uh, actresses like Candy Darling. Holly Woodlawn, Jackie Curtis. These people shaped the transgender movement all over the world, even though most of them were based in Manhattan. But um, yeah, Marsha was very sweet. Arlene was an angel, absolutely an angel. And you know. Yeah, she mentored uh, Kiara St. James and um, Tanya she Walker. a lot of people. Um, and she always had great stuff to say to people. And she always, uh, she was a very positive human being. She always said something uplifting. And she was just a really, Arlene Hoffman was a great human being, you know? And she yeah. died much too soon. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, I always hear very positive things about her. Like the same thing, uh, you know, uh, with Marsha P. Johnson which a lot of people, they don't know, uh, you know, how she chose her last name. Because, I mean, a lot of women in our community, especially women of color, they, they have to change their last name because, you know, their family, they say yeah. they don't want that in their family. Yeah, so sure. so that's why I kept both of my last names. It's like, you know, <laughs> my, my real I don't want to be erased. My real last name is Campbell, but I'm an actress. So, mm. uh, you know, Campbell, everyone's yeah. named Campbell, so I changed it to Montverde. Yeah, different reason, but, yeah. but for a lot of, a lot, a lot of women, they, they had to pick up it. And uh, Marsha picked it up because that was where she was working at. She was uh, engaged in survival sex. There was, many years ago, there was um, a chain of restaurants throughout the U.S. called Howard Johnson's. And there was one on Broadway um, in the theater district. And apparently Marsha worked there in more ways than one. I think she was also a busboy or something. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, but all oh. <coughs> <coughs> Ooh. You got your mints? <laughs> yeah, but she was also, I believe, um, doing sex work on the side. Yeah, I think she used to tell that, she, she used to tell people uh, that, that, you know, because of she had a connection with that area, she used to like, you know, pick up clients also there too. Well, and that's the thing about trans people in those days. They, many of them, my family was very accepting, so I hadn't, didn't have that problem. But many trans people in those days were disowned by their families and were desperate for some kind of familial connection with something. So since Marsha worked in that area, 
she chose Johnson, which in those days was not slang for penis. Johnson just meant Johnson, you know? And there was President Lyndon Baines Johnson. Um, you know, she, uh, but she was, um, you know, she was very nice. Uh, to me, I mean, that, that speaks volumes that, you know, how, you know, so many uh, trans women, they just get this own and, uh, you know, they just, have to be like, you know, um, a lot of people, they tell me, you know, they, they, they remember her from like, you know, I mean, um, th there's been uh, footage, you know, where she talks herself. And, uh, and but she used to say, the people used to say that she used to stand in the corner and say like, you have uh, money for a starving queen. Poor Did thing. you ever get to, 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 uh, to see her? Uh, uh, she never said that to me, but uh, I would imagine she said it to gay white men, you know. Yeah. Who that, that would have money for a starving queen, you know? Yes. So, uh, but she, um, yeah, Marsha was, uh, she took a very bad hand, but she was dealt by fate, and she did amazing things with it. So did Sylvia Rivera. They both uh, were not favored by the gods in any way, and yet they changed the world. The LGBTQ rights movement started in Stonewall with people like Marsha B. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera. These ladies had never been to school. I know Sylvia could read. I'm not entirely sure that Marsha could. But they were brilliant in their own way. And they fought like tigresses for the LGBTQ community. That means gay men, lesbians, trans people, in today's world, we're all very polarized. There are the trans people, the gay men, the white gay men, the rich white gay men, the lesbians, the lipstick lesbians, the designer dykes. It's all very polarized. But in those days, since we were all despised, we all banded together because we felt that there was strength and safety in numbers, you know? But still, you know, uh, a lot of our, uh, you know, transestors, they could not hide. And, uh, and since there was already this zone, so they was the face of the, of the community. While, you know, well, I mean, a lot of people, they don't like me to say that, but a lot of gay men, they were given a, a double life. So therefore, they were, you know, having jobs and yeah, respectable, sure. Sure. and, and, and married women, evening, and, and in the having evening, having children, and all they'll that. go to the bathhouse and all that stuff. Well, sure. So, so right now, a lot of women in, in our community, they think it's an injustice that they feel like the T is silent, and uh, you know, so because I mean, that they, we was identified, we used to be called transvestites, drag queens, yeah, right. and stuff like that. Well, and, Sylvia uh, founded Sylvia and Marsha together founded STAR, Street Transvestite Revolutionary uh, Action, uh, action something. Yeah, movement. right. Yeah, because, I mean, if, if you say you was a woman, that was like, that was racist. You end up in Bellevue. Even your own, yes. even your own sisters, you have to say drag queen. You say like, you know, like even Marsha, she say, I'm just a transvestite, you know, because she, well, she didn't want nobody to, to come. Well, but there's yeah. some videos when they she say, you know, I am a woman. There's some videos. And a lot of people, they like, they don't want to see those videos. But if you do your research, you look it up, and you see Marsha say, I am a woman. I've always been a woman, and I don't even need my hormones because, you know, she said, I got it right here. And this is before that we knew that bodies had nothing to do with gender identity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that was why I was one of the victims for many years. I thought it was like, you know, well, you know, just look at you. <laughs> you know, bodies are gender. They told me bodies are gender. You know, like, you know, the way you look, that's the way you are. And I was just like, uh, and, you know, that's, that's it. Some people, they're just like, okay, so I'm crazy. I thought I was crazy, <laughs> you know, I mean, like... So. I thought I was crazy, but not because I was trans. I thought I was crazy because I became an actress, and what am I thinking, you know? But the first time you look in the mirror, you say, I'm a woman. You didn't say, I'm transsexual or transgender or this, you know? The label came later. Well, I still remember that uh, when I went to nursery school at the age of four, I was surprised to learn that I was a boy. I know, news to the me. shocker, right? Yeah. You say, like, why the people are like, you yeah. know, don't they know better? Don't yeah. they like, you know, like, and it, it's, it's, it's like, it's a really, they call it cognitive dissonance. Something like that, yeah. Cognitive dissonance, and then just like, and then, you know, so, so it is like, that's something I'm really, really happy for the new generations that a lot of the younger, younger kids, now they believe them. 
now they believe them. I hear a lot of cases they just take them to the doctor and they're like, yeah, that's transsexualism or transgenderism. So it's like, you know, and the parents, they go like, oh, okay. So, and they just start by, you know, you pick your own clothes. Well, my parents like were like that 50 years ago. Isn't that amazing? Wow. They were very cool with my being trans. So you only had one puberty or you had two puberties? Well, basically one because I started taking hormones when I was still a teenager. So it was just a continuation of the puberty that had already started. Wow, you know? yeah. that's a blessing. That's a blessing. Yeah. Uh, to me, that's the most traumatic. And you know, I've been to some traumatic shit with my alcoholic father and stuff. But, but uh, I mean, being socialized as a boy, I think that fucked me up like so Everybody, much. nobody likes it. Well, when I went to school, I, you know, and I went to this these rough Catholic schools here in Manhattan. and. Uh, the, the nuns hated me, and I mean the dyke nuns hated me. But it me. makes a difference. I always hear that. It always makes a difference if you have one person, one person, oh, that yeah. auntie that just like she don't mind, just like you know, watch out, you know, just don't don't let anybody see you. And I hear that a lot, a lot of from. from is it makes a big difference? Mm -hmm. I didn't have nobody. My grandmother told me something wonderful. My grandmother was from Spain, and she was already eighty something, and. She would say to me when I would feel self-conscious about dressing and leaving the house, she would say to me, look, you don't know what the neighbors are doing. They have their own stuff going on. You are not hurting anyone. You're not doing anything wrong. Just march out the door proudly and go about your business and don't worry. You know, get on the bus, do whatever it is you're going to do, and don't be self-conscious because everyone everywhere has something. Everyone, no exceptions, and she was right. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, I wonder, you know, what's gonna be like the future, like with the, you know, with all these, um, you know, people, trans people, like you know that, you know, like men with with no scars, no nothing, and they just get to have like, you know, and, and they, that's gonna be their decision actually to come out. But I think, or not. Also, the future will bring people who choose not to be gendered at all to be beyond gender, post-gender. Not yeah, a but woman, we still not live a man, in a society that's visual. In a society that's very, very visual. It, it, it's still even like people are like, you know, they just, it, this is, this is a hundreds of years of, uh, you know, binaryism that, that, you know, like stuff like that. It just, I feel like, you know, I mean, we are still a subculture. Yes, but we can, just as Sylvia and Marsha and others changed the world via the Stonewall Rebellion in 1969, we can change the world by not falling prey to the prisons of gender, you know? By saying, I'm whatever gender I feel like being. I'm of no gender. I'm me. I'm a person. You yeah, know? but I mean, of course, everybody has the right to self-determination. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that it would be very realistic to set up somebody to say like, oh no, it's just like, you know. I mean, I would not do that uh, to my sisters. If I see uh, my sisters like, you know, I would say like, okay, you have the right to, to grow your beard and, and whatnot. But, you know, I mean, I don't see anybody like hiring except like a porn shop or some stuff like that, right. those kind of jobs. Yes, I know So it will saying. be setting our sisters up for failure. If we're like, oh, there's a million genders, or like whatever you do, do whatever. We live in a society that polices our bodies. It, not just trans, cis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, women cannot even get an abortion, birth control, cis women. And, 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 and you know, it, it, it just it's just very irrealistic, you know, to be like, you know, um, you know, I respect, you know, I always ask, what are your pronouns, day and there, or, you know, the, you know, stuff like that. Of course, I go by, by that. But, you know, it's, 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 it's not, it's not going to be easy, you know, for, for, for these kids. I feel like, you know, I mean, or who knows? We don't know the future. Right. It might be like, look at, look at that. You know, gay people can get married now. Which that, would, Nobody thought about that. I was 13 years old in 1969, and I went to school. St. Joseph's, half a block away from the Stonewall. If you told us then that gay people, who were then considered psychotic, criminal, uh, an embarrassment, selfish, because stop being gay. If you told me or anyone else then that gay marriage would be the law of the land unless 
less than 50 years. We would have thought, this person is crazy. It would be like saying today, and I'm not insulting uh, gay people, I am gay, but it would be like saying today, you know, someday bestiality will be perfectly legal. <laughs> Child molestation will be just Well, it was, it was that, that out there. Yeah. That, they're just trying to make a point that it was like, it was not. When I thought, you know, when I came to the United States in 1989, and, uh, you know, then I, I was walking by, and, and you know, I was, that was in Chicago. I used mm -hmm. to, my family's relatives, they was in South South Chicago. Mm -hmm. So I will take, whenever I get a day off, I will take the train and get off right there in Randolph. Um, so I walked by, and that's when I saw, you know, naked men in magazines, because back yeah, in the days, yeah. they didn't have, uh, like, hiding or anything. Right. It, there was everything out there. And I thought it's like, oh shoot, I got really shocking up. And, but I was told that the only possibility, you must be a gay man. So, so that was for me. So when they told me you are a gay man, and then I found out that, you know, uh, discover sex, because I was virgin, I was 23 years old. And discover I sex. I wish I could say that. And I that was that was my drug, my coping skill, because it was really scared. I was really really scared. Now I didn't know that I was really scared, but but I felt like you know, sex gave me the the relief, the the you know immediate gratification. So I was like you know I thought it was like well this is gonna be it, you know um, go to you know back then it's still there man's country. Um, go to you know all the the, yeah, the the sex clubs in Chicago, uh, and so I embraced it. I started embracing it, and I thought it's like so I'm never gonna get married. That was granted, and and then you know I blink, I woke up, and everybody was married, and everybody was like you know, and I was like, and, and I really felt like it took me a lot to adapt, and you know, and then I had a big major crisis and depression and stuff like that. That's when I started going to therapy. And that's how I found out I was a woman. Because I know there's something was terribly wrong because, you know, and, you know, I crashed and burned, you know. And uh, so that's, you know, I didn't even know what, what was going on. And the same thing kind of like happened, like, like with sex. I found out I am a woman. And the moment I started like dressing appropriately, accordingly, aligning my body uh, to my gender identity, my documentation, I start feeling more empowered. Mm -hmm. Everybody tell me like, oh, she, she was quiet like a mouse, and now you cannot even shut up. And now I'm a leader, and I'm a, like all this stuff. And I met <coughs> a lot of trans women the same thing. I, I was going to say, that happens to so many of us. That they were something else, very, very different, and you find yourself, and it's like, it's like a fish in water. Mm -hmm. Imagine a fish in a little pond where you're like, like, no, they put you in the ocean, and then you go like, zoom, 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 zoom. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna be really, really happy. Really happy, and I, and I wish that there was a, we live in a world where people can experience, experiment gender yes. identity and not be killed like Marsha P. Johnson. You know, not be other, not be called it. You know, they told me she couldn't even go to the, to the monster. They tell me, you can come in, but this thing, that, that's what they can, can miss thing, because we complained that we did not want to be called things. Well, Marcia. So they say, okay, so your gay men say, you are Miss Thing. The Miss Thing. What do you want, Miss Thing? Marsha was not tremendously invested in passing as a woman. She was proud of being a transvestite. Frankly, she loved I've seen the young pictures that she was. She was cunt. She was very feminine. Uh, and, and, and Marsha B. Johnson? Yes. And she even said it herself. There was many times, especially in the evening, I will pass. It was when, you know, if you don't get an orchiectomy, if you don't get hormone treatment, of course your features are going to get worse and worse and worse. And what people post the pictures now, they don't post the pictures when she was a little girl, that she looked really beautiful. They put the pictures when, you know, like her body she betrayed her. Year old her man, body you know? betrayed her and, you know, like all that stuff, horrible stuff that happens to, to us women of trans experience. And that's what people are like. That's why they keep they say, "Oh, uh, she was a gay man. Uh, she was a drag queen. She was like, you know." And, and and you know, really, when you hated her so much, you would just throw her a coin and laugh at her. You mm. know, back in the day. I never saw anyone do that. Not one person ever did that that I ever saw. On Christopher Street. Maybe. Oh, you mean like gay men doing that? 
Well, I don't say in her face. I don't know if it's in her face, but you know, I I feel like you know, it it just it was more amusing. What I mean, it was amusing. But we were. She was entertaining and amusing. Yes, but that's how she survived. That's how she got by. But pay it, pay. But it. excuse me, we, the transgender community, when they would do stuff like that, like gay men would make, we thought it was funny. We thought. Yeah, me with my lovely mouth. With, oh, look at that fag. What the fuck did that cocksucker just say to us? You know, because, I mean, you know, you'd think I'd have some I mean, and I feel like class. you cannot compare men because, I mean, like, uh, no, but I mean, you call men anything and Marsha was much more polite than I was. But I would tell for, people. For, for, for a woman, you know, we internalize that. You know, that's why, you know, like, I see a lot of men, it's like, why can I call you fat? Because you're fat. Why can I call you all because you're all? And men never going to get it. That is a very, it's not a, it's not a yes, fair but, comment but my point to is, be judged by our my, weight. My point is that Marsha had a very good sense of humor, and when they insulted us, all right, I was once walking down the street with her and a group of trans women, and these two Latin construction workers walked by, and uh, one said to her, you know, you're a good-looking guy in Spanish. I said... I was actually shocked. I went, oh, because I sensed that it was a put down to her. You know, I wasn't really complimenting her. And I said, oh my God, I'm sorry he said that. And she said, pay it no mind. And we just kept on walking. She was very mature emotionally. She, as I've said, she wasn't well educated, but she was nature's noble woman. You know that Andy Warhol shot her, right? He shot her with a gun? <laughs> You know, I mean, pictures. You haven't oh. seen the pictures from the factory? And uh, uh, Marsha P. Johnson? Yeah. Yes, in his Ladies and Gentlemen book, I think it is. Oh, okay. So you knew that he shot her. I, he it took slipped pictures. my mind, yes. I, you, my life is not about And he was not the career. only artist. Anyway, the we are out of time. And God bless you, Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera. Rest in power, mother. And Arlene Hoffman. God bless you, all of you. And God keep you and thank you for all you did for the transgender community and the gay community. Gentlemen, you would not be married today without Marsha, Sylvia. Say it again. And Arlene. Okay, I'm Diana Monford. My guest has been transgender activist Brooke Cerda. I'm Diana Monford. Even if no one else loves you, I love you. Take really good care of yourself. Whatever gender you are, it doesn't matter to anyone. It shouldn't matter to anyone. Be happy whoever you are and however you are. I love you a lot, and I'll see you next time. And if you pray, say a prayer for Marsha and Sylvia and Arlene. Bye. Yeah, finished right on time this time. There was no awkward silence. <laughs> Marsha was very nice. Yeah. But uh, you, when that, those two guys walked by, it was like 1976. We were in Brooklyn. Uh, we used to go to this free clinic to get hormones. St. Luke's, they were nice to us. They mm -hmm. gave us free. We would, were walking by, and. So she was on hormone therapy? Yeah. In 1976. 1976. So. That's why I see some pictures with breasts. And the people, they say like, oh, no, no, no. She was like, you know. No, no. They said there's a picture where she looks in her 20s. And she had like little breasts, like a little, a little girl breasts. I was 19 breasts. and she was 26-ish. Something like that. And she was on hormone therapy. We were all at this. It was, they gave you free hormones, you know? Yeah, because a lot of people are cheating. They were very nice. Hormones. It was 1976, so that, and 77, and that was really nice. We had a model who was transgender. I'm not sure if it's the famous one on the Clairol box, but she used to come oh, and get Tracy free Oh, Tracy Africa. Hormones. Right. She used to come and get free hormones, too. Yeah. You know they hired her again to <coughs> do another one? Another Clairol box? Yeah. Good. After so many years, they fired her because saying, a butch queen out of, here. out of her. They fire her ass, and then it's like they, they clear will say that. Okay, so we have you back. For, for, uh, oh, good. It's always so, like so much fun to have you around. Black I wise. love to, you're <laughs> doing this show. Thank you so much, Huggy. Mm. Take good care. You too. And, um, yeah, oh yeah, we're going to take a selfie. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, really quick with a shellfish stick, so. Yes, yeah, so we look 12 years old. So we can. You know, Arlene was an angel. Ask anyone. Arlene was so nice. We should sit because the lights were yes, done Yes, we already for us. have the lights. Yes. So, so can you can you sit on this one because I'm not right-handed? Okay.
I mean, I'll let him do it. No you problem. You know what I mean. Well, that's the thing. You're going to be in the orange light, and I'm not. So oh, that's, that's why. I gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah, I still can do it. I was just, it was just like... I'm just, just, uh, See, now you're much lighter. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was good. I like that's the question. I can just cut there. Oops. I had to plug the, the clicker. I'll tag in for you just so you can play it. Do you want to move on? Because I wish I had one. I mean, I don't, I don't have my glasses, but if you want to take a look, just swipe. Um, I don't. You better swipe. No, you just swipe that way with your finger. Oh, okay. They're nice pictures of us. You're right, and we had already the light. Uh, no, 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 down. Now, and we go like this. Okay. This is a very nice one. I like that one. I know, right? <laughs> you went too fast. You got too excited. Anyway, I'll tag you on Facebook. Okay, thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. And um, I put it on your own thing. You know? Yeah, I'll put it on my Facebook and I tag you. So so you 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 will get them on your page too. Great. Thank you. So the whole the whole thing. So they become part of my collection. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And um, you know we should do like uh, one day a photo shoot or something. Yes, we should. With anybody who wants to come. Well, you know uh, and, this uh, photographer. Because you know everybody. They can do it I was going to say this this woman named Daphne Chan. Uh, she's a friend of uh, Kayan. Oh, I Archer's. think, yeah, you meant, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's but how I know. she only likes to do nudes. When I said I wouldn't take off my clothes, she wasn't interested. Well, you know, when you go to the next event or whatever, you say something, hey, I'm a photographer, maybe for next prize season or something, mm. and we put in advance so everybody can come dress whatever they yeah, want, yeah. and we take like a, like a group big mm -hmm. nice that would be picture. That fantastic. You know. Like a big yearbook picture, yeah. Yeah, something like that or something. This is all I got, right? I think. My rebozo está en la bolsa. Cleopas. Ya estoy lista. Pues sí. Bueno, estás en tu casa. Sí, pero voy a bajar contigo para tomar. Sí, pero voy a bajar contigo para
Like, has it been transferred? It's still in the red thing, yeah. And the CD.